Hello and welcome back to Explore Infinity. As you can see behind me, I've had to expand the uh, quarry storage a little bit. I was getting a lot of other blocks, so marble. Uh, this one is door diorite and andesite. This one I haven't gotten through the quarry, but I thought it's a possibility, so I've added it in. Oh, and also limestone, which comes up a lot. So I've had to expand it, so as you can see in my sorting pipe, I've had to add in these ones along with the others. So now it all just goes through there, which is pretty nice. And I've built myself an alumite pickaxe. This has a slimy handle and an obsidian, um, let's just put it in here. Uh, no, it doesn't work like that. Anyway, it had obsidian tool binding and alumite head so that I could go and harvest some cobalt, which I have sitting in here. So the aim today is to make a hammer, which we're going to do with a slimy tool rod and we're going to use paper plates on the side. Paper doesn't really give us anything much other than it allows us to add an extra modifier to our tool rod, uh, to our hammer. And as far as I'm aware, the plates don't uh, contribute anything to the hammer anyway. So as you can see, we now have um, yeah five modifiers. So normally three, and there's five. Cool. It's got nice high durability as well. Right. So we need to now upgrade its speed. So I might not get too many speed upgrades for the moment. I think there's all our redstone. Okay. So this will make it a bit faster, which is what we really need. Separate that out. Now I can add a bit more. So you can see we're mining speed six. That's pretty good. Well, it's not great because that's even better at eight. But this will allow us to knock down much bigger blocks, which is what we're really after. Uh, Alright, now the next thing is we're going to make ourselves a compass. One of these. So iron surrounded by charged Certus Quartz. That's one of them. And one of them. Alright, there we go. Meteorite Hunter. 
So this will point us in the direction of a meteor. And as you can see it's pointing over there. Before we go there, I think we'll just charge up our jetpack. Hopefully it's not too far away. When I get a bit closer, uh, I'll be right back. Alright, we're just here, and as you can see the arrow is pointing in this direction. And that tells us we are now above the meteorite. It seems to be covering a fairly big area. Mm. Oh. Right, so it's somewhere underneath us. So we'll just dig down a bit. Here we go, this is it. Let's put up a torch. So that is what the meteorite looks like. You can see it's called Skystone. And so we need to... Now this will take quite a while because it is extremely tough. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get to the center of this meteorite, which is where we'll find a chest containing uh, a few items that we're going to need for our next build. So once I get to that point, uh, then we'll pick right back up. So I'll see you in a few moments. Ah, well, actually, no. There it is right there. So we've actually broken the chest. And you can see um, we have an inscriber calculation press. So that's what we're after. We needed, uh, we actually need three more of those. Not that particular type we're looking for. I'll just show you. Look for a press. Uh, maybe not. Oh, yes, there we go. So there's the calculation press that we just found. We also need the engineering logic and I don't know what uh, that one, the silicon press. And we only find them in the center of meteorites. So let's head back up. Alright, so now we're going to go hunting for the next meteor. And so I'll be back once we've found that. Okay, here is the chest. This is what it looks like. And it's just sitting there. And okay. And there is another one. Exactly the same. Nuts. Alright, so we'll keep looking. Okay, so I've managed to find all of the uh, 
uh, presses and you can see I ended up finding four calculation presses. I had to find quite a few meteors to get all these. It took quite some time. And I ended up cheating a little bit because um, the compass only finds, looks for skystone. It would be handier if it looked for skystone chests. Uh, so even if you've found a meteor and gotten the stuff out of the chests, it still finds that skystone in the meteor. So I went into creative mode and used my hammer to destroy all the meteors so that I could find a few more. Uh, so it still takes a long time. But we're going to need these to start creating some applied energistics stuff for our assorting and building. This is a lot different to uh, the previous version of applied energistics. It's a bit more involved and you need a lot more cabling and stuff. Uh, to do with channels, but I think it's still pretty good. I quite like it still. Uh, just a little bit more work. Um, so we're going to make up uh, the inscriber. And to do that we want to make some Fluix crystals. So you can see make up a Fluix seed made from dust and sand. So we need to make up some dust uh, uh, there we go. We need to create some flux crystals first. So drop charged surface quartz, nether quartz, and redstone into a puddle, and wait. So I've only got a little bit of redstone, but that's okay. Four and only a little bit of charged. And I need a bucket. make my puddle here so we'll chuck this in and that and that and there we go we've made eight fluix crystals so now if we grind that up Some sand. Uh, it's not much sand. And oh, that's a lot of sand. Uh, I probably don't need that one. So there's our sand. As you can see, we've combined our sand and our fluix dust, and it's doubled it, by, but given us seeds, 16 seeds. So what we do is we chuck that in the water, and we have to wait. Now this will take quite a while. In fact, it will take a really long time. But we can speed that up by using crystal growth accelerators. As you can see, that's going to require Fluix blocks and cable, which we need Fluix crystals for anyway. So we won't be able to do that just yet. Um, but Quartz glass eyes. Oh, Alright. Uh, so we'll just leave that there. We'll let that go. If we have a look, we 
can see still nothing. So I'll leave that to go for a while. Alright, so I'm back and I've bashed some leaves and got some essence seeds and spent a bit of time getting this up with my trusty watering can. Uh, which means I now have a little bit of magic essence. Or, what is it? Essence of nature. Now, that's pretty good for me, but if you're playing through infinity and you don't have magic crops on it, uh, you might not have access to getting cactus this way. Um, oh, oh dear, I forgot to turn that off. So we'll just turn that off. There we go. Ah, so I need six. Alright, so I just need to get one more. Um, which means you'll probably have to go hunting for a desert biome or something similar. I decided I wanted magic crops on it because then I can do exactly this. I quite like the way magic crops works, although I imagine it's a little it's a little bit cheaty. Um, just a little bit. It is quite cool though. Come on, one more. That's all I need. Uh, doesn't look like I'm going to get it. There's only a chance, ah, oh, there we go, that you'll actually get uh, Essence of Nature. And it's only given when you're the one bashing the blocks. If you have a machine harvesting it, uh, I believe you don't get uh, the Nature's Essence. Okay, so now I finally have some cactus. Seeing as my other cactus plants do not actually give me what I'd been hoping for. So these just give me cactus seeds and cactus fruit, which doesn't really help anyone. Well, it doesn't help me anyway. A bit of sand. We'll put the cactus trees over here, a little bit out of the way. Now cactus won't grow if there is another block touching it. Uh, yeah, that should still be alright. So there always has to be an empty space around the cactus. In fact, the only thing that can grow directly in between is uh, sugarcane. So that's one way of saving space in your farm, if that's what you wanted to do. And there is some cactus green. Just cook it again. Uh, no, we don't need to cook it. Into the crafting bench. And there we go. And now, oh, um, all right. Oh, no, I might as well sleep. Oh, it's night time. And now a void pipe. So we finally get to make a waterproof void pipe. So if we stick this on here, bang! Oh look at that, sludge, all gone. Just straight away into the void pipe. And so now that will just run uh, as fast as what it should be running. Good.
I don't need to worry about that farm for a while. Uh, we'll stick our die here. Excellent. Now I think the... Uh, hmm. We could to get some more farming crops going, but what I think I'd like to do next is to start setting this up so that it will uh, automatically smelt our ores. And we might change the way it's sitting a little bit because we probably don't need quite so many chests. Some iron. And I think I might just upgrade some of these chests. I'll turn them into iron chests. That way they only take up one space, which is oh, no, over there, this one. three in there. Alright. <coughs> uh, so chest. So we're going to make a wood to iron chest upgrade, which is just some planks surrounded by iron, so it's nice and easy. Six was right. Ah, that's a pity. Not only will this reduce our space, it gives us a bit more space as well. And there we go. Let's just get rid of these. Because of the way the pipe was sitting, it means that there shouldn't be anything in these chests. diamond pipe and have our ores going off there so that they get smelted and then fed into these storage chests maybe so maybe we'll want Maybe what we'll do is we'll keep those all as storage and then we'll have these as our smelting operation. Let's try that. Alright, I'll be back once I've got the machines sorted out that we need for 
uh, smelting and grinding. So I'll be back in a sec. Alright, I have the bits that I need, or the machines anyway. So I think what we'll do is we'll have our ores come into this chest, and then we'll have our sag mill. I think we'll have another chest and then the alloy smelter, which we want in furnace mode only. I have some capacitors that I made up for them. Like that. Um, we're going to need to grab some food from out of the other. have power which we're going to I think we'll try putting it underneath just to hide it a little bit Good, good, good. So yeah, it's slowed down, but that's okay. This is still providing power, and these are slowly filling up. I think what I will do is I'll add a couple more windmills, just to keep a good amount of power flowing. Now, what we need to do... diamond pipe. We might need some more iron, which means we need a wrench. And definitely need cobblestone pipe. Send the uranium through now. That's different tin. 
protein, calcium, aluminium, iron, copper. All right. There's definitely going to be more, but we'll sort that uh, when we get to it. So let's put this pipe here. Go into there. So on the black. Tin. Iron. Osmium. Aluminium. And our coppers. Now the reason I have two copper types and two iron types is because I added mechanism in separately and uh, so they don't stack on top of each other which is why all the other ones do stack because that's the way that Feed the Beast people set it up. Uh, Alright. So now we want to set this up. Right click to pull, left click to rotate, and I'm going to push out to there, and then we can see, nice, and so on this one, right click to pull, left click to push, and there we go, oh, I like this already. So now we're going to break that, stick that there, now we need this to and a lever. So we need to build a redstone engine. Ooh, that looks cool. Redstone engine is sufficient for what we need. So that's going to require a piston. Oh, okay, I'm going to need some more cobblestone. of uh, doing this um, rather than having a redstone engine. Redstone engine is the easiest way, especially at the moment with my resources. And uh, so that's why we're doing it this way. Plus, well, it takes up, well, two blocks. It's really not uh, not that difficult. And seeing as we're not really, it's plenty of space there. Uh, what am I looking for? Glass. Plenty of space, so we just go with this. Plus, the redstone engine can't explode, which is good so we can just leave it running without having to worry about cooling it. Uh, actually, I've forgotten one thing. We need a wooden pipe. No, I don't have any, so this glass again. Glass, wood, wood. There we go. So 
there's a wooden pipe. We have to have a wooden pipe so that it extracts. And then we put our redstone engine on and our lever. Switch it on. Let's see, it's already going. And there's our, an iron bar coming in. And it's working. Nice. So now everything will come back in and it will go into these chests. Still not a proper sorting system because we still have to um, manually check where the things end up. As you can see these iron bars are skipping all these chests. Lovely. Ah, actually. Maybe that's... things aren't going to go into that chest. So let's just grab our dolly. Nice thing with iron chests, so they can sit next to each other. So there we go. And now things should still go into that chest. I think because it had a solid pipe it wasn't going to go in. I think. can sort this further by putting diamond pipes on top of each chest and restricting what goes into each one but for the moment I think this is good enough everything gets it's getting smelted for us which is nice See, oh, there's, yeah, good stuff, excellent. All right. Well, I think that's a good spot to wrap it up there. I think um, this has been, this has worked quite well. And next time I'll have a couple more windmills in here just to keep this ticking along. It's moving quite slowly by the looks of it now. Yeah, we definitely need a bit more power over here. And then I think um, we might need to start looking at setting up some automated farms and getting our magic crops going. Um, yeah. But that's all for me for today. So, see you later.